Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on moviehousememories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. Welcome to Movie House Concessions on the MHM Podcast Network, where each episode we pull a random file from the display case to see if it tastes as fresh as the day it was released. I'm Patrick. And I'm Chad. And this month we're reviewing Dread from 2012, starring, I just blank for a second, starring Carl Urban and Lena Headley. Uh, and, but before we get into mine and chad's review and this of course is a another cinema day comic book version a film chosen by chad so i'm assuming you have something to say about this film a couple things just a couple <laughs> all right uh but before we get into this film our review of this film first i'll i have a summary for us the year is 2080 and most of the world lays in radioactive devastation known as the cursed earth following a nuclear war humanity in the united states has combined to form one giant city on the East Coast, known as Mega City One. The city has a population of over 800 million people and is riddled with crime, totaling over 17,000 serious crimes each day. Law enforcement has been turned over to the judges, who now act as judge, jury, and executioner if the situation is called for. One of the most effective and violent judges is Judge Dredd, who has been tasked by his chief judge, to evaluate a new judicial recruit, Cassandra Anderson. Anderson is a mutant who has developed powerful psychic powers, which allows her to read other people's minds. Despite this, Anderson still failed the judicial aptitude tests. Dredd has been ordered to test her to see if she can survive as a judge in a crime-riddled world. At the same time, three rogue drug dealers are stopped from committing a robbery. The drug dealers seek asylum in their 200-story slum apartment building called Peach Trees. The drug dealers work for drug lord Madeline Mama Madrigal, who runs everything that goes on in Peach Trees. Mama is displeased with the rogue drug dealers for working on the side. She has them all injected with an addictive drug known as Slow Mo, which reduces the user's perception of time to 1% of normal. Mama then has her men skin the rogue drug dealers alive and throw them over the side into the atrium from the top floor. Dredd and Anderson are dispatched to investigate the rogue drug dealers' deaths. Once at Peach Trees, Dredd and Anderson discover a drug den within the building, which they raid. They kill many of the drug dealers, but capture one of Mama's main operatives, Kay. Anderson reads his mind and learns that Kay was the one who carried out the executions of the drug dealers, per Mama's orders. Rather than executing him, Dredd decides to take Kay in for questioning. When Mama learns of Kay's apprehension, she orders her computer expert to take control of the building's security system and seals the building to prevent Dredd and Anderson from leaving with Kay. The sealed building also prevents the judges from communicating with the outside world. Mama orders her men and the other citizens of Peachtree's to kill the judges and return Kay to her. She also threatens to punish anyone who assists the judges in any capacity. Dredd and Anderson find no sanctuary initially and must fight their way through the building to pockets of safety. Dredd decides to move up through the building to get to Mama. Once the judges reach the 76th floor, Mama and her men use rotary cannons to fire on the judges. The ordnance rip through the walls, killing both some of Mama's men and innocent residents, but Dredd and Anderson survive. Eventually, Dredd and Anderson breach the outer wall of the building and are able to call for backup. At the same time, Mama sends her right-hand man, Caleb, to track down and kill the judges. However, Dredd gets the better of Caleb and ends up throwing the henchmen off the tower in front of Mama. Dredd suspects that Mama's desperation to stop them is a ploy to keep Kay quiet, so he begins beating the drug dealer for information. Anderson intervenes and reads Kay's mind, 
she learns that Peachtrees is the center of slow-mo production and distribution for all Mega City One. With the new information, Anderson proposes hiding and waiting for their backup to arrive. However, Dredd insists that they press on towards Mama to fulfill their obligation as judges. Unbeknownst to Dredd and Anderson, judges Volt and Guthrie arrive at the entrance of the building as backup, but Mama has her computer expert deny them entrance into the building to buy time. Soon after, Dredd and Anderson encounter a pair of armed teenagers, whom Anderson is reluctant to kill. Kay uses the distraction to disarm and overpower Anderson. He takes the inexperienced judge as a hostage and takes her back to Mama's base on the top floor. Dredd continues to fight his way through the building towards the top floor. Mama calls in assistance from four corrupt judges, Lex, Alvarez, Chan, and Kaplan, to stop Dredd. The four corrupt judges relieve Volt and Guthrie at the entrance and are allowed into the building by the computer expert. Not long after, Dredd encounters Chan and becomes suspicious when Chan fails to inquire about Anderson's well-being. Chan attacks Dredd, who easily kills the corrupt judge. Back on the top floor, Jay attempts to kill Anderson with her own firearm. However, the pistol's DNA scanner prevents the gun from firing and explodes in Kay's hands taking the drug dealer's hand off. Anderson uses the opportunity to escape and runs into Kaplan. She reads Kaplan's mind and promptly kills her, realizing her duplicative nature. Elsewhere in the building, Dredd encounters Alvarez and kills him, but exhausts his ammunition. Lex finds Dredd and shoots the helpless judge. Dredd hides and stalls long enough for Anderson to arrive, who then kills Lex with one of the dead drug dealer's weapons. Eventually, Dredd and Anderson make it to the top floor and obtain the code to Mama's apartment from her computer expert. They find the drug lord inside and confront her. Mama informs Dredd that she is wearing a dead man switch on her wrist that will detonate explosives on the top floors of peach trees and destroy the entirety of the building if she is killed. Dredd concludes that the detonator's signal could not reach the explosives from the ground floor. He grabs Mama and forces her to inhale slow-mo. Dredd then throws Mama over the side into the atrium on the ground floor, 200 floors below. Mama dies, and the explosives fail to explode. In the aftermath, Anderson acknowledges that she failed her evaluation to Dredd because she was disarmed by Kay. She walks away, symbolizing that she is at peace with her fate. The chief judge arrives and asks Dredd about Anderson's evaluation. The stoic Dredd tells his boss that Anderson passed, and that is Judge Dredd. All right. Uh, Chad, you got any numbers on Dread from 2012? Well, I got all kinds of numbers on this one. This is a fun one. So let's see. Dread was, it debuted on Jan, or excuse me, July the 11th of 2012 at the San Diego Comic Con. However, it was not released into theaters until September the 21st of 2012 in 2000. 506 theaters made for just under 30 million dollars if you listen to what carl urban has to say dread made six million two hundred seventy eight thousand four hundred ninety one dollars in its opening weekend putting it in sixth place for that weekend it finished just behind end of watch house at the end of the street trouble with the curve all three of those debuting that weekend as well uh, the fourth place film was Finding Nemo 3D, and the fifth place film was Resident Evil Retribution. During its six-week run, uh, domestically, Dread made $13,414,714. Uh, like I said, domestically. Uh, worldwide, or excuse me, internationally, it made $28 million, just over $28 million, to bring the worldwide total to $41.467 million. I uh, found it interesting that the United Kingdom earned $6.651 million, and Russia made $3.451 million for Dread. So those are the three biggest nations that love this movie. For the year 2012, Dread finished in the 123rd position, behind such films as Killing Them Softly, Lockout and Hit and Run, and it finished just ahead of 
Lay and Touchables, Playing for Keeps, and Patrick's favorite uh, film about the Russian high society, Anna Karenina. Uh, let's see. This is we'll talk about this. This is a big time cult movie. If you stop and think about it, uh, and it became a big time cult movie thanks to DVD and Blu-ray. And this movie made just under twenty two million dollars in domestic Blu-ray and DVD sales during its time. And let's see here. The Internet Movie Database gives this film a seven point one out of ten. Uh, Metascore gives it a 60. Uh, I forgot to ask the Google robots how much they like this one. But uh, Shane Adam Bassett's uh, employers at Rotten Tomatoes give this an 80% critic score and a 72% audience score, which is extraordinary for most of the films we review nowadays. But uh, the only other thing I want to bring up is this was also, and I'm sure we'll talk about it, a remake, if you will, of a 1995 movie called Judge Dredd that starred Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I wouldn't count it as a remake. <laughs> you know, okay, reboot, if you will. Reboot, yes, yeah, that's a fair reboot. one. <laughs> so let's see, that movie had a production budget which was about twice the production budget of this one. That one made, uh, let's see, 34 or almost $35 million in its opening, oh no, oh, excuse me, $12 million in its opening weekend compared to the $6 million in this film. That one had about $34 million, $35 million at the domestic box office over its run. Um, and it, worldwide, that film made $113 million compared to the 42 on this film. So I'm sure we'll talk about Judge Dredd versus Dredd here in a little bit, but those are the numbers for this film. All right. So Dread, uh, 2012 version. Uh, once again, Chad, we, we went through and said these are the films we want to kind of review for Cinema Day comic book, although ideally we review them all by the time yeah. we die. Uh, but, uh, this is one of the first ones you wanted to review. Sure. So uh, I'm going to throw it to you. Yeah. What about this film says it said to you that uh, this is one I want to discuss earlier rather than later? Okay, so I mentioned Judge Dredd, the 1995 film, and I like Sly Stallone, but that movie was just god-awful. That thing was a piece of garbage, and I just could not stand it. So when this film was being made and being released, I sort of poo-pooed on the notion that they're making this. It looked cheaper, it looked crappier, it looked like they were just putting it out for a straight-to-DVD type thing. Um, I was a big fan of... Uh, Lena Headley and um, Carl Urban and definitely Wood Harris from The Wire. And I was like, okay, you got some good people in it, but I'm not going to go see it in the theater. I'll wait till it gets to video and I'll watch it then. And then I see it on video the first time and I am effing blown away by this one. I loved watching it because they scaled it back. It wasn't a shiny, high budget comic book film like Judge Dredd was. This one was very gritty, uh, very, I'll say, one storyline. They didn't try to have a whole bunch of convoluted storylines going on. Uh, Carl Urban, from my knowledge of Dredd, played Dredd the way Dredd is supposed to be played, which is humor. He's a smart ass, but yet you can't tell he's had any humor. He's not supposed to take his helmet off. He's very straightforward, by-the-book kind of guy. Yes, he sort of bends a little bit when it comes to Anderson, but it, it, it just was one of those movies that reminded me of a classic 70s film, like a sold on Precinct 13, where it was like set in one area for the most part, and you just had a single storyline, and I just was fell in love with it because it was so simply made for a comic book movie that I was like, this is kick-ass. I mean, this is what comic book films to me should be, which is gritty, straightforward, but yet give you a sense of reality and a sense of otherworldliness, but yet entertaining when it all boils down to it. And that's why I fell in love with this one. It, you know, it's interesting that you said well, a lot of the points you make there is that, you know, I, I too did not see this in the theater, even though I'm a comic book fan. Uh, I had a, a baby shortly before this film was released and just didn't make it to the theater as often as I used to. And I can't say I was a huge fan of Judge Dredd from the 90s with uh, Stallone, so I wasn't really looking forward to a reboot 
if you will. Although I love Carl Urban, uh, you know, he's I, I think he's a tremendously uh, talented actor and he tends to pick a lot of projects that I generally do enjoy. And I was like, I'll just catch it on video. Yep. And we had uh, around the same time as when we got a 3D television, I think in 2012. And so when it came out, uh, I got the 3D disc I, and I bought it immediately. I didn't it wasn't a uh, I rented it and then watched it. It was like, nope, I, I just got the 3D disc and I watched it. And exactly what you said is that I was amazed at the simplicity of the story that you did not overstuff this uh, to a large extent with a lot of visual effects even though it's a futuristic story it, it almost almost i will stress almost could take place in modern times i mm -hmm. mean it it's a story that translates to you can have this set in the modern era and the grittiness of it the it just this you you didn't i don't need to see the entire expanse of world of mega city one i you know i needed the story required that i know about this apartment building and this conflict between dread and mama you know on this particular day and i thought wow i mean this this is really really good storytelling they really and as you kind of implied they caught the nature of judge dread from the comic books which i don't think stallone's version did you know stallone's was too shiny he never takes off his helmet you know stallone took every opportunity to take off his helmet in in the the, the 90s version and i I too thought this was like an ex excellent reboot of the film and and I was I was impressed by how clever they were just to scale it down and not try to you know make it much more expansive overstuff it with a lot of things you didn't need this is a simple story told extremely well uh, mm -hmm. and and I really I too really enjoyed the film for those aspects of it uh, but now I'm going to get into the next part of the, the, this is that it's now uh, 12 years later. Why have we not seen a damn sequel to this film? Uh -huh. <laughs> because this was done very well, received very well, didn't make a huge amount of money, but no. didn't cost a lot of money to make. W you know, wh what are your thoughts on that? I, I'm, I'm perplexed by this one because I could see this. Being like you said, and not a movie that made a lot of money, didn't cost a lot of money. Yeah, it, it did. But in the grand scheme of things, look at all the schlock that is on all the streaming services, and even back in the day when direct to DVD or direct to VHS, that probably didn't even need to have money put into it. This was a well crafted vehicle that could have, you know, got the word of mouth. And built into something, and I think I mentioned the Blu-ray and DVD sales. That's where it got its cult following, if you will. I just think somebody got scared by the whole concept of, you know, it didn't make any money. It wasn't the X-Men. It wasn't the Fantastic Four it, at the very minimum. Um, so why are we going to waste our money on this? I go, we gave it a shot, and they didn't get anything out of it. Nobody knew who Carl Urban was. For the most part, nobody really knew who Lena, if you didn't watch, was if you didn't watch Game of Thrones or Wood Harris, if you didn't watch The Wire. I don't know. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me because this is the kind of movie that should uh, be a jump starter for people to make movies with this type of budget to just make that same amount of money back, if not a little bit more and keep going and building off of it. I think if they would have kept going and done one more, they could have seen the fruits of their investment through the video market into another theater run because it's happened with TV shows. You look at uh, Firefly and Serenity and things of that nature. Word of mouth, um, what was the other one? Um, I was thinking of when we are doing this, uh, putting some notes together. Now, the Kristen Bell TV show got a Kickstarter in a movie out oh, of it. Veronica Mars. There you go. Veronica Mars. I mean, just little things like that could like helps word of mouth can grow and comic book films are growing at this point in time. So I think, it, I don't know. I think they just missed it on this one, Patrick. I really think they could have gone round two because it didn't cost much and they may not have made a whole lot, but yet they still could have done more than what the crap was. that was sitting out there.
You, you know, it's interesting. Around the, the time the director was going around when he was doing press uh, before the film's release, saying that if this film made forty or sorry fifty million dollars, that there would be a sequel, and he, he had kind of had a rough outlay for a trilogy of films. This one only made the box office forty one point five, so it fell short of that ultimate goal that would potentially was going to green, green light a sequel. But still, the uh, kind of the follow up, as you said, said, this has become somewhat of a cult film. There are people who talk about this film today and the lack of a sequel, even mm -hmm. to this day. Even Carl Urban, you know, talks about the disappointment of that the, the sequel has never been greenlit, and and I was surprised. You know, when I made a, you know, kind of the summary for this is I, I thought this film was much more recent than it was. I had in my memory, it's like, oh, it's only about six or seven years old. You know, it's like, oh, crap, this is this is over a decade. You know, this is a long time. Now you're not really talking about sequel. You're talking about reboot at this point. It's that the audience has moved on to many other comic book films. And I, I think this was a huge missed opportunity because they got the tone right. They had the right actor for it. Mm -hmm. you, it's not like you're bringing back a huge supporting cast. It's dread. That's all you need for the <laughs> sequel. You don't need, you don't even really need Anderson. You can move on past her if you wanted to, uh, but you could bring her back, but I don't see that actress as hugely expensive to bring her back for that. So it's just Carl Urban and he seems to be willing and able to, to come back for, to the role. If you could just get together and, and to, to write another screenplay. And especially in the time frame from, you know, 2012 up until roughly COVID comic book films were huge. I mean, yeah. huge. And, and 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 I think this the audience was there. I think you could have built upon the audience. The one drawback th that is this was R rated. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it did not go to children. But, you know, I, this predates Deadpool. It predates Logan, where R rated comic book films did make money and i you know i'm i'm just perplexed why they didn't come back and revisit this uh and you know or someone come back and go here's an unexplored property that could be lucrative to us in some capacity and maybe you hit the nail on the head right there maybe it just didn't hit the masses the way they the studios think it should like a deadpool would or a logan would um but i mean deadpool wasn't the most popular name out there except for comic book fans when the movie came out once the movie came out and people saw it and they knew like ryan reynolds was attached to it then yeah people watched it who weren't comic book fans they fell in love with it and then it's grown and grown i still think this is the same type of thing yes it's not dread i think it has the stigma of being second to judge dread um, so basically it's going to get overshadowed by that piece of shit. But again, it may not hit the masses, but let people consume this one and then go from there and see what the next one will do for you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I will never equate Carl Urban to Ryan Reynolds. There, 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 there's an audience that goes to see a Ryan Reynolds film. I mean, he's a hugely entertaining guy. Uh, I, I like Carl Urban a lot, but uh, that's that's a stretch. I will, uh, I will agree with you on that. Plus the fact that, you know, Judge Dredd is not Deadpool. <laughs> he yeah. is not as entertaining as Deadpool. But I, I, not that you're going to expect, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars from a Judge Dredd film. But I don't think it's beyond the reason that this film, a sequel potentially could have outgrossed the original. It's not. Un it, it, it happens. It happens all the time, you know, where a, a, a film gets uh, greenlit and then the second film is what turns into a huge box office i'm you know I, I once again huge missed opportunity i would have loved to see more films similar to this tone uh, with carl urban and it just never happened but you i i could just see some of these uh studio people uh seeing the the tv show or the prime show the boys starring carl urban yeah. and thinking holy crap we could have done something more with this guy yeah and stuff around him and you know, it, just a thought. Well, but I mean, the, the boys, I would say on a weekly basis, there's probably more special effects in the boys than this, this film entirely. Oh God. Yes. All right. And so he's not, he's not, uh, adverse to doing a television series, do a dread television series. I mean, what, 
it, he's he's willing to do these things. What, you know, why why haven't you been taking advantage of him? Because I, I think he he really hit the character. I think they really hit the tone. And it even if you just did a, a series on this, if you don't make a film, but if you just do a series on it, especially in you know the 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 late two thousand tens, early two thousand twenties, the explosion of everybody throwing money at streaming. <laughs> why why haven't we why didn't somebody throw money at this right right i agree with you it makes no sense all right well we've been talking around uh, about him but let's talk about carl urban I, it sounds like we both are glowing over his <laughs> his interpretation of dread at this point you know anything else you want to add to that uh i don't have a man crush on him no not at all um <laughs> no um yeah i enjoy almost everything he does i mean work wise i movies tv shows everything he's done i've probably seen in the last decade plus he's a very good actor handsome dude people don't necessarily like the three movies but when he plays dr mccoy in the star trek movies i think he hits it out of the ballpark and is one of the more entertaining components of those movies so I always tell everybody, go watch those if you want to see something where he's got range. I like the dude. I think he's great in this movie. Granted, you don't get to see his entire face, but you know it's him if you've seen his other work. And he is Judge Dredd to me from this point forward. He just hit the nail on the head with the personality. You can tell he's being a smartass without being a comical smartass. You know he's being an action guy without being a over-the-top action guy. He just is great in this performance. I I think we've covered that base. Yeah, you know, uh, I know Shane would say, "Well, he's a Kiwi," but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he's he uh, it tends to hit into my wheelhouse. He does a lot of kind of science fiction, fantasy type of roles. You know, I I've I have loved him in the Lord of the Rings series. Uh, you know, that was essentially my first introduction. I, even though I saw like I think his first movie role was Ghost Ship. I saw that. I don't remember him in that and I never went and revisited that film. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't watch Xena Warrior Princess, which apparently he made his debut in. Uh, but, you know, I after the Lord of the Rings, he was on my radar when he was in uh, the one of the Riddick films. I, 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 you know, he was a draw for me for that. Although I liked the first Riddick film, I, that's that was the, the what drew me to the film. I thought he did well in that. I remember him in one of the Born Born films. You know, yeah. I thought he was great in this. He, uh, I thought to be honest with you, I got I got to say when he was cast in the Star Trek films as McCoy, I went, "Ooh, that's a miscast." I can see everybody else, but I can't see him. <laughs> But he did it. I mean, he he more than most of the other actors, I thought, really hit the nature of McCoy. And I really liked him in that series. And I, it's been a disappointment to me that that series has not continued on with that group of actors because I thought they had good chemistry. And I thought they really got the nature of those uh, characters in the series they did. Although the third film was not a good film, it wasn't the acting, it wasn't the characters, it was the story that wasn't that entertaining. Um, he had a small, you know, a relatively small role in Thor Ragnarok. I liked him in that, you know, and yeah. then we get to the boys, which I, I, uh, he, I mean, he is perfect in the boys as Billy Butcher and, and I highly respect him as an actor. I think he does really, really well. Uh, I won't go so far as to say as it's a man crush, but I will say that <laughs> if he's in a film, it's going to it, similar to Ryan Reynolds, not as intense, but uh, as Ryan Reynolds, I will watch it, you know, because yeah. he, I think he has a good nose for uh, interesting projects that are going to be entertaining to me. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he's uh, one of the better actors going out there, at least in the science fiction, science fiction, fantasy comic book world at this point. And you no, know, I, I would hope even though he's getting up there now in age that he'll get a, another opportunity to play dread sometime in the future. Cause I think he really nailed it. And once again, my comparison is combo comic book and sliced alone and Stallone did not hit the comic book. And, and he, and I, and yeah, I, I try not to judge the Stallone film too badly because it has Rob Schneider. And that was what I really fucking hated about that film is that it became this buddy film and too comically driven. And it just, it just was inconsistent tone with how the, uh, the uh, judge dread comic books read. 
I always said that they tried to make Judge Dredd and Demolition Man like one and the same. I mean, the Stallone Demolition Man vehicle was fine, but the Judge Dredd vehicle was just terrible. Uh, but I agree. I, I that that I, that ninety five film was just garbage to me. So it is what it is. All right, Lena Headley. Now, at the time that this was being released, this is the beginning of Game of Thrones. I mean, and obviously that became more ingrained in the zeitgeist, much more so than Dread, at least. Um, but I'm surprised that Game of Thrones fans didn't come back and revisit this role because it's, uh, once again, a strong female character, villainous, very similar to Game of Thrones. What did you think of her as Mama? Oh, I, once again, she's one of the biggest badasses in uh, comic book movie history. I think they, she, you know her from Game of Thrones as being an evil witch. Well, she was definitely an evil witch and hit it out of the ballpark in this film. Uh, I re- originally knew her from the movie 300, which I think we've already reviewed here on this podcast. And, you know, that's what was my introduction to her. Game of Thrones is probably the next biggest thing I knew her from. And then when I saw this movie, I was like, yeah, she's perfect. And she was evil. She was power hungry. Uh, She was perfect. I I can't say anything negative about her her as mama in this film, because if I was thinking of a evil comic book uh, lady in any way, or hell, even a man, she hits all the high notes and there was no detraction to her. At the end of the day, her demise was somewhat of a bluff between the good guy and the bad guy. And she lost out in the end. And she even pulled that off great. And I loved her performance in this one. You, you know, it's it's a ruthless performance. I mean, it, it's a, she is there is no sympathetic element to this character at all. She is willing to kill Everybody and anybody around her for, for her purposes. So I really like that about that character because she's the other extreme to dread, you know, where he's he's ruthless and I've got to accomplish my goal, my job, my mission. And she she's the you know, the 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 bad guy to his I will say roughly good guy because he's not really good. He's very, very much shades of gray leaning towards black. (laughs) There's a fascist element to his his character in that film. Only because he has Anderson along does it tone him down a little bit. Uh, But, you know, she plays the character with a scar on her face. I mean, this uh, this is not. You know what most actresses would say. I want you know I want this glamorous role. This you know a lot of scenery chewing. You know I don't want any makeup. I mean she she plays it to the hilt, and I agree with you. She was perfectly cast. She plays it perfectly, and I think she's a great antithesis to what's going on with Dread and Anderson through the course of the film. Um, and I, I I really enjoyed her performance in this. Yeah, one good thing is she's not one of those uh, big bads who doesn't get her hands dirty, even like during the big machine gun scene. uh, She's right in the middle of it all. She's not saying, here, henchmen, go do all my work for me. She does have a couple of them do stuff, but yet she gets involved, directly involved in everything. So you know that she's truly evil and wants to keep her control over the Peachtree Towers. All right. Ending of the film. Uh, the idea of that she's got the the dead man switch on her wrist. If she dies, then everybody dies. And Dredd just taking the gamble. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not going to work if you throw her all the way to the bottom. Uh, it's going to be out of the the signal. Um, the the addition of I'm going to make her take slow mo. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> great for special effects purposes. Do you think that's consistent with the Dread character? Yes, I thought it was perfect because he's like, you're killing people with this drug. Guess well, how you're going to die, sweetheart. You're going to die with this drug, too. And then he was basically like we said, he was sort of being very calculated and somewhat calling her bluff to see if it would actually work. And let's face it, she almost tried to take the whole towers down herself with the machine gun scene where she basically blows off the side of a building. So she didn't really care if the building collapsed or not in the grand scheme of it. So he just said, okay, let's go with it. I'm going to toss you off, see what happens. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. (laughs) And I'll live with the consequences later on. 
Well, I mean, I think the fact throwing over the edge is consistent with his character and that, yes. you know, his job is to execute the guilty and it, she's extremely guilty and worthy of death at that point in time. It's the element of I must accomplish my goal. She must be punished and there can be collateral damage. There's collateral damage throughout the entirety of the film yep. with all the innocent civilians and peach trees. And he doesn't give two shits about any of them at any point in time so uh, that's that's a flaw in his character but i think it's a flaw in his character consistent with the origins of the character in the comic book right yeah i agree i mean her death scene Kay's death scene which you mentioned in the summary where they brought up the id uh mechanism within the gun so somebody who isn't have the dna match to the gun can't use it and him his arm blowing off Another great scene. That's one of the great things about this movie is they make everything logical and somewhat realistic based upon the information they've given you in the movie. So uh, her dying by the basically the same drugs that she was using, I thought it was just apropos. All right. Anything about else about this film, Chad? The only thing I wanted to bring up, like I said, real quick, I love Wood Harris um, from The Wire when he played Avon Barksdale. I love seeing him in this one as Kay. Started out a bit slow, but once he got the ball rolling, another great character, great actor. Glad to see it. Uh, also was glad to see Judge Dredd have to go up against uh, four other judges within the movie to prove that the judges can be um, evil and um, dirty, if you will. And that, that little segment was kind of cool because as dirty as Judge Dredd can be and on the gray as he can be, there are the judges who are totally in the black and he found a way to take them down yeah that, that was an interesting element in the film i i i truly like that too and especially in such a corrupt world where it's so crime-ridden it's uh, to me a little bit unrealistic to think that the the uh, the, the judges can't be uh influenced or uh, corrupted a little bit and so I'm, I'm glad they addressed that and i'm glad that they had that kind of conflict i thought that was a good element to the story same here. Yeah, that was pretty nice. And I wasn't the biggest fan of the Anderson character, but I thought the actress did well. And uh, in the end, uh, she made the yin to the yang of Judge Dredd. So I'll give her some props for that one. Yeah, I, I think that it, and that's a good I'm glad you kind of brought that up. I kind of uh, glossed over her a little bit. But, you know, she she's the emotional element that, that to dread. And if you don't have her there, then he becomes really uninteresting and he just becomes almost terminator like and he's driven on this mission she she gives him emotional balance throughout the the telling of the story it, as i said it would have been interesting if they'd gone on to a second film and focused solely on dread is if you kept that balance by bringing her back or returning her in some capacity uh to the role because it, it, it you could lose sympathy access mm -hmm. point if you will for dread if he just becomes like i said a killing machine like a la terminator where he's just killing the guilty and 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 then it becomes a lot less interesting of a film because most mechanisms in movies is they have a female you know uh, love interest be that component but she's not necessarily that she's just a trainee so yeah i i appreciate the way they approached it with her and i thought she did a nice job for balancing out dread and giving this movie a little bit of a heart correct and she's not rob schneider <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right after all said and done chad on a scale of one to five do you consider this one this film a bad one or do you give it a high five this is a solid four and a quarter for me. I really, really appreciate watching this movie every like year, two, maybe three years. Um, it is a kick-ass movie to sit and watch. Uh, comic book fans, action movie fans, Carl Urban fans, <laughs> Lena Headley fans, whatever. Go watch this one. It is a fun movie to watch. It's only about 90 minutes long. Um, it's very straightforward. There's not very many moments where you'll be uh, looking at your watch or anything uh it's got a whole bunch of funky stuff in it uh good storylines uh great acting great action all that good stuff i really love this one and yeah i wanted to get this one reviewed because i didn't know if anybody out there really talked about it um in the grand scheme of things i just love it and i want people to watch it 
I'm going to echo almost everything you said other than your score. I'm going to go a little bit higher, four and a half stars for me. I really enjoyed this film. As you said, it's a tight film, you know, just a little over 90 minutes long, but it is solid action, you know, throughout the, almost the entirety of it. It's not, there's no slow points. There's nothing that I found uninteresting. It, every scene builds the story. There's, there's not a lot of fluff to this. You know, I, I find it immensely entertaining. I think it's one of the better, if not best, comic book films uh, ever made. And I'll and I'll go out on that limb, ever made uh, out yeah. there as far as taking the tone of the original comic book and uh, translating it to film. Uh, anyone and and I'll as I said. I was influenced by the sh- piece of shit that came out in the 90s with Sly Stallone. And, and that's why I didn't run out to go see this film in its time in the theater because I, was, I had such a negative impression from that film. I would rush out to see anything with Carl Urban and Judge Dredd now because I enjoyed this film so much. But yeah, so solid film. Highly recommend it. Uh, shame on us for not going after it back when it was in the theaters, but you know we we err and we found the light, so you guys find the light too. All right, well that's it for our review of Dread. Please let us know what you think of the film in the comments section. And for our listeners over on MovieHouseMemories.com, please rate the film from one to five stars on that page as well. If you've enjoyed today's review, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the MHM Podcast Network, where we have many, many more film reviews from yesterday, today, and beyond. Well, until next time, I'm Patrick. And I'm Chad. And this concession stand is now closed. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The song Rock On Brudda is brought to you by Marwan Nimra at natintine.com under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Movie House Concessions, the MHM Podcast Network, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment, LLC, unless otherwise noted.